guy's got a good voice. The man sitting next to me is um, one of our best actors. He has an image that's mixed. One of the parts of it is that uh, he can be a psychopath better than almost anybody I know. Gene Stapleton was here the other day, and I said, do you divide actors into two groups, those who can thrill you and those who can't? And uh, somebody said, you know, that's a good, uh, a good way of saying it. There are actors that you know if they're in the movie, you don't care what it is, that somewhere in it they might give you goose pimples, make you cry, or cause a clutch in the throat, and Dennis Hopper is one of those. Uh, I went to... Um, Easy Rider years ago with Janis Joplin. I've never confessed this in public. Uh, I just taped a show with Janis and she said, let's go see the movie, and we did. And I think it took me halfway through the film to realize that I was looking at the same man that I'd seen in Giant some years earlier. I don't know where this introduction is going, and I think I'll cut it off now because <laughs> it would be more fun to let him talk for a little bit. Here, uh, honoring our stage and gracing our platform, <laughs> It's Dennis Hopper. Wow. And, uh, oh, and you're not the one who has a new HBO film coming out, are you? I think so, yes. Witch I, Hunt, Witch Craft, Witch, 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 Witch Hunt, Witch Hunt. Witch title. Yeah. Which, okay. Yeah, which title? <laughs> we, we, we will get to Saturday that. Saturday night, I believe it's coming out. Yeah. Dennis, if I may call you, or Mr. Dennis. Yes, uh, sir. You certainly may, Dick. There's if something I, I would love to clear up. For, your glasses okay? Yeah, I just, uh, just I'm going to, I can see you now. See me all right through better, those shades? Yeah, better now, better now. Okay. This is a device. This is a theatrical device, I think it's called. Uh, oh, yeah. It's a prop. It yeah. puts you at ease. Um, could you clear up something for me? Th there's a legend in the biz, probably not known that much to the general public, about a famous incident. And I think it was the distinguished director, Henry Hathaway. Uh -huh. You were not a money, name, powerful actor at the time, and yet you you held out for what you thought was the right thing to do. <laughs> is it something like that? <laughs> well, Can you tell that? A, oh, God. Is it worth telling? Uh, I don't know. How many times have I told this? This is like sort of like... I never heard it. Sort have of you like been on talk this, shows before? <laughs> <laughs> this is sort of like being in the theater. You have to get up for this performance because uh -huh. I have, yes, through the years told Could this Could you one bring yourself to a do few it? few times. Because some of our viewers just came to this country. This, this is a shock to me. I mean, that I'm really going to try to do this one again. We can uh, save it for later. No, 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 no. I try to get right into it. Okay. Well, Rolling. let's see. Where are we in this? All oh, right. It seems I, to me that uh, I was in. If this was in the fifth. I was under contract to Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. and uh, I would say probably this is about 1956 or okay. 57, somewhere in there. That's fair. And uh, <clears throat> I am loaned out from Warner Brothers to do a movie with Henry Hathaway at 20th Century Fox. And it's called From Hell to Texas with Diane Varsi and Don Murray and Joe Wills. And myself. So uh, I didn't want to do the movie. Hathaway came to me and he said, oh, you're a wonderful young actor. I want you to be in this picture. I'm going to build this part up. Because there was really no part. There was a, the weakling son of the bad guy. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to. Warner said, we've loaned you out. You're going to do the picture. Blah, blah. I said, OK. So I get there. Of course, it, the part never gets bigger. It only gets smaller. And uh, Hathaway, so much for promises. Yeah, though. right. And Hathaway <laughs> loves me. He takes me to dinner. We have the most wonderful times at dinner. And then and he promises me all sorts of things. And the next day, uh, I see him on the set. And uh, I said, Mr. Hathaway, you said at dinner, that was dinner talk, kid, dinner talk. Come on, we're making movies here now. Yeah, OK. So yeah. <laughs> it was uh, much like the late Dean Acheson. Right? Something, yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, well, he's, he was, he was a. <clears throat> He was a very, uh, very big director at the time and a great action director. Anyway, he kept wanting me to imitate Marlon Brando. He wanted me to give me re line, he'd give me gestures where I'd talk like this, and he would tell me when to pick up the cup and when to put it down and when to, you know, uh, I mean everything. He had to give me everything. So. I kept fighting with him. I kept walking off the picture, and uh, he kept taking me to dinner. And we have these wonderful dinners, and promised me all sorts of things. And it'd be that's move, that's dinner talk, kid, dinner talk. So finally, the last day of the film, the last day of the film, uh, I come in. My last day of the film. I have a ten-line scene with my, with my evil father, uh, bully father. I'm the weak son, and uh, he. Uh, he says, uh, Hathaway says, you see those, you know what those, uh, those are right there, those cans right there? And I said, 
yeah, those are those are film cans. He said, that's right. There were stacks of film cans on the set. And he said, yeah, that's right. There's enough film there to shoot for three and a half months. I said, wow, great. He said, now, uh, you have this 10-line scene here. You're going to do this scene the way I want you to do it. You're going to do every line reading the way I tell you. Every You're going to pick up the cup when I tell you and put it down when I tell you. You're going to do everything I tell you to do. Or we're just going to stay here for three and a half months. I own 40% of this studio, 20th Century Fox. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're going to stay here <clears throat> until you do it my way. And you can make a career out of this picture. We're going to send for lunch. We're going to send for dinner. We, I got sleeping bags. You know, there's sleeping bags over there. No, <laughs> hey. We're here now. Yeah, until you do it my way. Yeah. So I started the thing at 7 in the morning. I started shooting the scene. <clears throat> at um, about 11 o'clock, Steve Trilling, who was the head of Warner Brothers, called and says, what the hell is going on over there? Do whatever Hathaway wants you to do and just get back over here. Are you crazy? They send for lunch, okay? Yeah. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Jack Warner calls and said, are you nuts? What do I have to do? Buy 20th Century Fox? Are you crazy? Are you going to ruin this? Get back over. Do whatever Hathaway wants and get back over here. Okay. Now, at 11, they send for dinner. Okay. At 11 o'clock at night, I finally crack. And I start crying. I say, okay, Mr. Hathaway, tell me one more time what it is you want. He tells me, I do the scene his way, and I walk out of the studio. Now, he blackballs me for like seven, eight years. Now, until that moment, every time they said rolling, what would happen? You would do... I would do, I would do it a different way. What you wanted to I do. I would do it a different way. I would do, I'd create some, you know, I was... You'd do it any way but what he said. Any way but what he said. <laughs> anything. Yeah. Now, in, in those moments, did it cross your mind? What that, was actually I, going on in your I might really be mind? screwing I up. Be, <laughs> I may be through in this business, but by God, yeah. I've been challenged and I'm not going to give in. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. Your self-esteem was on the line, was it? Well, not only that, but I had a lot of reinforcement because everybody hated him. <laughs> they were cheering you on? Well, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, then, well, there, there, but there's a tag to this story. Okay, now, okay. <clears throat> I married Brooke Hayward. Yes. Okay. Leland Hayward and Margaret Sullivan's daughter. And we have a child, a little girl. And now I'm called in to Paramount, to Henry Hathaway's office. And Henry Hathaway says, Duke and I, John Wayne, right. have decided he married a nice Irish girl. We knew her mother. And, like, you know, you have a little girl of your own, a little daughter of your own, that you should start working again. Because I have now, for seven, eight years, have not been allowed to work in the industry. I have been blackballed. Yeah. And really I can only do worked. television. I can never do any features. So... Hathaway had that power. Well, and it wasn't... I mean, the story. The story had that power. It's I mean, who wants to hide? Yeah, Dennis, okay. I'm not tired of the story. But we need to go to we commercial. We have to take a break. <laughs> but I know that no one except a fool would tune out at this point. Right. We'll be right back with Dennis Hopper.